Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's online event to track an oil spill, think like an oil spill. My name is Anahit and I'm the marketing manager at NNTC. So before we go further, if you can see and hear me, can you please drop a plus sign in the chat box? Okay, thank you so much. I see a few plus signs. So in this event, our technology expert at NNTC, Powell, and the president of Polar Sensor Technologies, David, will be discussing about how to minimize environmental, reputational, and legal damage using the modern technology of oil spill detection. So during the presentation, if you have any questions, you can either raise your hand and we will let you talk and ask you the qu uh, question, or you can just drop the questions to the chat box or the Q&A section. Please just make sure that the questions are available to both the attendees and the panelists. So without any further ado, I'll give it over to Pavel and David. Thank you so much. Hello. Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon for those who are a little bit uh, in the later time zones. My name is Pavel. I'm a technology expert of NNTC, and today we wanted to present you an innovative uh, technology which helps to detect oil spills on the water. Um, David, see if you can just make one slide. Thank you very much. So let's let's just introduce NNTC a little bit. We are a UAE-based IT company who are specializing in innovative technologies such as artificial intelligence, facial face recognition, ad, uh, advanced industrial technologies, and the drones. And we've been here for quite a while and uh, really managed to implement several new and interesting technologies on the market. Uh, now I want to give the word to our colleague, uh, David Chinort. And uh, actually, I want to tell him a big, big thank you for, for the fact that he's joining us from Hansville, Alabama. And it's been 2 a.m. right now. So, David, <laughs> how do you feel tonight? Uh, well, um, yes, it's been a long day for sure. Although, um, yeah, I guess it could be a short day so far. Uh, on Wednesday, but um, yeah, thank you. I, we appreciate the opportunity to be here, Pavel, and uh, we're we're glad to participate here. Um, Polaris, um, as Pavel said, we're we're based in Huntsville, Alabama, in the U.S., and uh, we're a, a high-tech company developing innovative optical systems for commercial and military applications. We've been uh, in this business for almost 20 years, um, developing uh, optical systems and cameras across the optical spectrum from the visible into the infrared and um, in, in working on applications for our customers uh, in both hardware and software. Um, the uh, one uh, area or one area where we bring a, a special expertise is in the world of polarization. I'll talk about that in a little bit greater detail in a few minutes. Uh, but the long and the short of it is, is that uh, we enable our customers to uh, see things that were previously unseen, as you can kind of see along the, uh, the bottom row of images there. Thanks for introduction. Um, dear Dangers, if you don't mind, we, before we continue further, we really wanted to ask you some short questions about your areas of application or areas of your business. So if you don't mind, just go through the poll, please, and uh, let us know so we could better tailor this presentation today and we can better tailor the, the, the content which we deliver to you. So, okay, looks like most of the people are already replied. And the winner is, yeah, we have a we have couple of most categories who the uh, interesting categories like fixed site monitoring of the uh, of the oil facilities and drone based surveillance okay let's go forward then so uh, if we speak about oil detection oil spill detection technologies uh, what are the what are the main technologies available today on the market there would be Marine radars, which are capable seeing on oil spills, the airborne synthetic aperture radars, thermal imagers, and satellite radars. And that's 
that's quite a lot, quite many of the technologies to the date. But what what we see here is actually more, many of them they do have some drawbacks. For example, marine radars are great for a short range detection of about five miles, but at the same time they don't really work until unless uh, unless there are waves. And the same you can say about any radar technology because the thing is that the principle of oil detection on the water with a radar is based not on the material pr uh, property difference, but more about how the oil influences the waves and how the oil will influence the reflection of the uh, radio waves from the from the uh, from the water surface. The thermal imagers be, are able to operate in both calm and uh, wavy waters, but at the same time, the detection rate uh, really depends on the on the conditions a lot. So moving forward, the Pixis and Polaris sensors technology is a completely different thing. And we actually want to ask you the question, what if we can show you the technology which can actually detect both crude and refined oils on the water surface, rough and calm, and with high detection rates, low false positive, day and night, and moreover, it's very, very lightweight sensor. It starts from about 300 grams only, which gives us an opportunity to really make it applicable to many, many different deployment options. And if we look further, then there would be few deployment options we actually can cover. And the first one is the, the first deployment option is a stationary where we can install the sensors and they be just talking forward. The sensor is actually the camera and we can install these cameras uh, in a stationary application around oil rigs. We can install it uh, at the inlets of desalination plants to make sure that the oil doesn't come in or we detect it some time before it comes in into the inlet itself. Uh, we, we really have a lot of scalable software in order to automate the detection and this software can monitor many, many sensors at the same time. So giving you an opportunity to monitor your uh, facility 24 by 7 and to make sure that you detect an oil, oil spill as early as possible and without false detection which will waste your time. The second deployment option is to deploy this camera on the drone and that becomes possible because of really compact and low, low weight and this this opens the doors not only to big flying machines like in the case of synthetic aperture radars but also with the traditional multi-copters uh, like dji like uh, unique or daho or any other type of quadcopter with a payload weight around a kilogram uh, and Another option is to deploy it on the fixed wing machines to monitor big areas or big spaces in the sea. Uh, we also provide the flight automation software which can uh, automate the flight completely from takeoff to landing and making the area scans easy without pilot intervention. And that enables basically single person operation of the whole drone based drone deployed system. Um, the system will also generate the report automatically once the oil spill is detected and the report will be sent to the to the ground in order to send it further to the oil spill response teams. And finally, the third option is, is a basically handheld camera which can be used on the ship decks, it can be used on the piers in a small harbors or maybe in emergency situations around the uh, oil rigs. So that's a little bit more flexible. And actually it's the easiest option to deploy because it's just a camera with a handle connected to the tablet and uh, it can just work instantly. Um, and now I really wanted to, you know, to give another word to Dave and uh, tell us about the technology, how it really works and how we can really achieve that amazing results with that. Yes, thank you, Pavel. Um, yeah, so the technology is based on um, a regular thermal long wave infrared camera, uh, some of the uncooled uh, thermal cameras that you may already be familiar with and, and some of which are actually already used in oil spill response. 
but we've added a um, our our special capability uh, in the polarization and in, in being sensitive to the polarization. Polarization is another property of light, along with uh, the color and the intensity. Um, and the polarization we're talking about is is the same uh, polarization that you're m making use of when you put on your polarized sunglasses. Um, and instead of uh, just eliminating the glint off of uh, off of a, of a car in front of you in traffic. However, what we're doing is we're actually measuring, uh, quantifying the amount of polarization in the scene. And the amount of polarization in the scene, and specifically in this case where we're looking at oil and water, really depends on the optical properties and the optical property differences between the oil and the water. And so that's what we're measuring with our cameras, and we can actually differentiate between the oil and the water as a result. And, and how we do that is, um, again, using a conventional uncooled uh, microbolometer technology. And in the same way that um, a, a red, green, and blue filter is inserted into a color camera, we're inser inserting a polarization filter into the microbolometer. The, an example of that is shown there, uh, where we're looking at different polarization states. Um, and we can capture all of the polarization information in a single snapshot and then process it in real time to show the differences uh, between the different materials in, in the scene. Now it's important to note that uh, even though this is a, a thermal camera or this is a polarized camera, it is still at heart a thermal camera and we can provide the thermal imagery as well. So what do we get out of it? Uh, so this is a scene uh, off the coast of Santa Barbara, California, where there are actually natural seeps that, uh, that rise to the surface from the seafloor. Um, you can see in the upper left-hand corner um, a, a visible picture of, of the scene, and you can see the shoreline, you can see the sun glint. Uh, there's actually also kelp um, present in this scene. In the upper right hand part of this image, you can see the thermal uh, part in, and you can actually identify the oil with the thermal image, but you also get the wave action and, and thermal differences in the water and of course the very strong uh, uh, signature from the, from the shore. The bottom left hand image is really what we're bringing to the table with, uh, with the Pixis camera, it's the polarization image. But again, we, we measure both thermal and polarization at the same time. And so we combine those images into a single image that we call e-therm, enhanced thermal. So in, the, in this particular case, what we're highlighting is the oil and we're, we're highlighting that in, in red. Um, so what this looks like, um, we actually used the handheld version um, as one of my colleagues was hanging out of the side of a helicopter uh, grabbing this imagery, this is what this looks like. And again, with the thermal, you can see some, some slight variations in the color temperature, but the oil stands out very strongly. And so these signatures are uh, robust enough that uh, we've developed prototype autonomous uh, detection capability. And so now I'm gonna try to share the screen for our live demo. Um, let me grab the right imagery here. And if, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, Dave, uh, the, because you are now at night, uh, we will be able actually to see how this technology actually differs from the thermal imaging because we can see the oil spill at the night time. That is correct. Um, yes, uh, again, it's two o'clock in the morning here and so, uh, and, and so it's pretty dark. Um, and do you guys see uh, two video streams now? I just want to make sure you're getting the imagery. Yes, we do. Okay, so on the left-hand side, again, we have some lights uh, lighting up the, um, the back of our facility here. We have a little, a little test pond, if you will, um, a, a reservoir where we have uh, placed uh, several objects. There's rocks along the back edge of this, uh, of this pond. There's actually uh, kelp or some uh, water vegetation in, in these areas here and here. Uh, there's some wood chips uh, shown in this area here. And um, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to release the oil uh, inside this bin here momentarily. 
Um, uh, so this is did you get some salad leaves here to just to feed the fish? <laughs> yes, actually there is. So you can see uh, you can see a, a lettuce leaf here and here. There may be one other one floating around uh, somewhere. Oh, there's there's another one right there. So so yes, we have uh, we have a, a salad for your uh, dining pleasure this evening, and a piece of pla uh, a piece of plastic bottle here too. Let me zoom that back out. There we go. All right. So uh, now then on the on the right hand side of the image, uh, we have um, this is our prototype autonomous detection system uh, that is scanning the scene uh, continuously. And you can see that we have no oil here. You can see the thermal image. This water bottle is actually a little bit warmer than uh, uh, the air temperature is warmer than the water temperature the water vegetation here, and here's the pan. The reason we use this in a pan is because uh, oil gets, um, contaminates everything, and we try to contain it as much as we can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn out the light. Wow, well, now it's became really, really dark. Yeah, it's really dark. Now you'll actually see the thermal image. Uh, my colleague is going to um, inject some oil into that pan from under the surface. So this is gonna represent uh, a subsurface uh, release of oil that might happen if you have a, 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 an event or break under, um, uh, under the ocean. There you can see it bubbling up and we have a detection. So the, the frame goes red and we have our status change, changes to detected oil. And just so that you can see that we actually are detecting the oil, we're gonna turn the lights back on. Uh, and there you see it in the pan. Well, that seems, that, that seems amazing. It's just a real time. Once, once it was released immediately under the water, we, we've got the notification that it's there. That's exactly right. Yeah, so the, um, the, the processing involved is not too sophisticated and we can actually, uh, we, can, we can do real time processing on a number of different platforms laptops, tablets, uh, mini processors, um, and things like that. And also, if I'm not mistaken, we can also detect, uh, say the area of the spill and make some an estimate about the amount of oil released. That's exactly correct. If you, um, if you uh, provide some uh, information about the installation, then we can uh, estimate the area and, and actually also provide a minimum volume uh, estimate as well. Yeah. And what happens if the film of the oil is very thin? And uh, we actually, would we see that? So the, the detection threshold of, of this uh, system is on the order of about 50 microns, 50 micrometers, uh, which uh, corresponds to really the, the, the transition from thick rainbow sheen to metallic. Um, so in the neighborhood of, of 50 microns, um, we, uh, once it gets above the detection threshold, we, uh, we don't really sense the thickness, uh, but we, uh, we, we certainly have uh, very strong signatures for, for oil that thick and thicker. Yeah, and uh, that's true for, for diesel, kerosene, jet fuel too? Uh, that is correct, yes. Uh, we have tested it against a number of hydrocarbons um, in both fresh and oil, uh, fresh and salt water, um, and a, a number of different crude oils from, um, from around the U.S., Alaska, North Slope, um, several crude oils from the from the Gulf of Mexico, and so on. Okay. And so, I'll, actually, I'll actually show an example of uh, of the diesel detection here in just a moment. Okay, sounds good. So, so, so if, if if I understood you correctly, if I'm a cook on some big ship and throw some vegetable oil into the water from my kitchen, you will not see that. But definitely hydrocarbons would have really, uh, say, unique signature in order to distinguish between them. Uh, that's correct. Yeah, well, we really don't see vegetable oil um, or, or some of the other oils. It's, it's really the hydrocarbons. That sounds great. So can we see any other examples? Uh, thanks for the live demo, by the way. It really looks amazing. So let's take a look at other examples which you have today. Yes, absolutely. I have, um, I have several recorded videos. Let's see if I can get back to that. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> there we go. Yep. 
Okay, you're seeing the seeing the videos now, I guess, right? Yes. Uh, the okay, so here's an example um, in calm water. Uh, now we we've, we've done some testing at the um, so-called Omset facility, which is in New Jersey. It's a it's a big 200 meter long, 20 meter wide pool that is used for uh, oil spill response testing. In this particular case, uh, we're flying along the length of the pool in the bridge there. And, um, and you can see that we have passed two areas of oil. Those were crude oil. And what we're looking at right now is diesel. And you can see that the, the diesel really is completely invisible in, in, the, in the visible part of the spectrum, barely visible in the infrared. Um, but all three, oil, all, both crude oils and the, and the diesel uh, were very visible in the polarization and our fused e-therm imagery that you see in the bottom. And so this is, this is uh, demonstrating the ability to see on smooth water, uh, which uh, actually is one of the, uh, the failure points of, of radars. Radars re actually require some uh, wave action in order to do their detection. Uh, we also work in waves as well. So here, um, the, the, that same facility, and you can kind of see the sides of this facility now, um, has a wave generator, generator. and so uh, even in breaking waves, the um, oil is uh, is visible uh, with our uh, with our Pixis camera. We have a couple of interesting questions here. I think we lost David. You can see in the thermal that it's for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are losing the, your voice a little bit. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, correct. We okay. can. So we have a couple of interesting questions here, Dave. One of them is just, will Pixis work in extreme weather conditions? And I believe extreme weather conditions, we are talking about here the rains or storms or maybe uh, thick fog. Yeah, so um, uh, severe weather does uh, does reduce our, our capability. Um, and, and in fact, in, in very strong rain, very low clouds, um, we, uh, we really lose our sensitivity. But that's the same as it is for um, infrared cameras as well. So, so we, don't, we don't lose anything over the uh, over, uh, infrared cameras. And the fact that we can see in, in wavy conditions is, uh, is an advantage that we have over thermal as we see here. Yeah, I think there are a couple of interesting points here which we need to, uh, to, which we need to repeat. If you look at the calm water, we, we, we detect an oil on the calm water, which is absolutely impossible for radar-based technologies, uh, despite what type of radar has been used. And at the same time, in a wave to, in a, in a wavy weather, we can we really can do much better than thermal. Actually, the thermal is almost non-visible in the, in a waves, but, but that's possible. And another thing is thermal-based detection is based on the actually of different temperatures, and which means that we need to have probably a sunny weather in order to really heat the oil and distinguish them from the cold water. Is that correct? That that is correct. So uh, when 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 it's cloudy or at nighttime, uh, as we've seen actually, the 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 apparent temperature of the oil and the water uh, get to be very much the same. And w without the sun shining on the oil to heat it up, then the the thermal differences are almost indetectable. Again, as we as we see here in the upper right hand image, um, you just it, it's really hard to very difficult to see anything in the thermal. Okay. Another small question is actually, we will cover it a little bit later on the later slide. Uh, how far can we see? And that's a very common question everyone asks. So let's, let, let's take a look at this a couple of slides forward. Yes, absolutely. So um, in, in the meantime, I'd like to look at the, the, the emulsified oil. So in many situations where you have a spill or a release, um, either offshore or, or maybe even in a harbor, um, with wave action and, um, and sunshine on the oil, a lot of times what you'll get is you'll get emulsified oil where, where water gets mixed in with the oil and you get this, uh, this stuff that looks like uh, chocolate pudding that we see in the upper left-hand corner. And again, in the uh, upper right-hand corner, the, um, the thermal really just doesn't show, show it very well. 
um, without having the the polarization and the e-therm imagery to kind of cue you to where to look, I don't think you would find it at all in the thermal imagery. So um, a, a lot of different uh, situations where um, where the Pixis camera can uh, really pull out the uh, information that that the other technologies can't. It's amazing. And one more point uh, again, uh, that works at night too. So just yes. imagine it's not only the daytime detection. If you look at this oil, even if emulsified oil, it's still visible at night. That is correct. Yes. Great. So going back to the question, how far can we see? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> So uh, unfortunately, the answer is it depends, right? Um, I mean, if this is a this is an optical system, it's a camera, and so it it depends on where you're looking from. So the higher you are, typically, the further away you can see. Um, the bigger the lens, the longer the focal length lens you have, uh, the 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 better you can see. And so um, what we've done in order to really kind of get a handle on all the different parameters that you can. Uh, look at is um, is what we call an installation guide, and it's um, it, it does a few other things for you as well. But um, among other things, it allows you to look at your installation and how you're going to deploy the sensor, and help you determine what focal length lens, where it should be, and what you can expect to see. And so, what we have here um, on the right side is a, a graphical depiction of what the camera will see as projected on the ground. So um, for example, in, in looking at that pool earlier, we could see the edges of the pool uh, at, the, at the longer ranges as you would expect from a camera. Um, and so uh, we have actually two cameras here set up. Um, in this particular case, I've got them at an altitude or a height above the, above the uh, sea level at 133 meters. This might be, for example, very typical of the altitude for a quadcopter flight. Um, 400 feet in the US is, uh, is the uh, maximum altitude that you can fly without uh, special permission. The focal lengths to the lenses, uh, we have, uh, we have our, our catalog lenses already programmed in here. And so what you see with this altitude and this lens and looking downward from the horizon at this angle, 13 degrees, you see this blue outline and what you can see here is that we are um, able to see oil from some, somewhere around 400 meters out to 1,100 meters uh, for this particular combination of altitude and lenses and look directions. Uh, the orange uh, box is, is shown by Pixis Cam 2 here, where we've uh, changed the lens and the look angle. And so if you have the two of them together, you can see from uh, about 170 meters out to uh, over a kilometer. Now, how much oil can you see is another question that this uh, spreadsheet answers. And so at the, at the most extreme uh, range out at 1100 meters, uh, we can resolve at the minimum thickness about, about eight liters of oil. Um, now, as we get closer and closer, of course, at the, uh, at the near end of, of that particular camera, uh, we're looking at about a third of a liter. So when you are at uh, about 300, uh, 307 li uh, meters here, uh, you, you, can, uh, you can detect about a third of a liter of oil. And so you can do the same thing for a, a lot of other cases. Let's say, for example, you wanted to go to a fixed site monitoring approach and you wanted to have some good overlap. Oops. <laughs> Let's undo that. So there we go. We got some good overlap between about 20 meters uh, close uh, a distance from the, the mounting pole that you have out to about 170 meters. And again, the amount of oil that we're detecting is, um, is really quite small, less, uh, significantly less than a liter um, for, uh, for all of these cases. So if you feel that you need to consider your particular application, a particular installation, just feel free to reach us. And we have a lot of experience of implementing that. Uh, we will be able to guide you how to best plan your installation and uh, your setup to make sure that you really solve your oil spill detection 
uh, issues. So just just let us know. Uh, we we can design the installation for almost every type of application you may need. So uh, let's have another poll now. Uh, really because there are so many people today who are really works in this industry and uh, we would really like to know what technologies are, are you using today what is the best one and what is the hit on the market if you don't mind to spend another 30 seconds just answering these questions that will be really great So here is the poll. Or maybe if someone has uh, using something else, just raise your hand and type it in the questions. It will be interesting to know. Okay, thank you for the poll. So, which means that most of you are actually using thermal cameras today. And maybe someone would like to share their experience in short, just to tell us what, what, is, your, what is your result with that. Onshore marine radars are also quite popular. That sounds good. So, uh, let us go to the next slide and we can talk and we can talk about the benefits which pixels can give you. So just to summarize whatever we discussed during the, the whole presentation now. So we, we, we do detect oil spills in the real time so you can respond on time too. We work day and night and we, you don't miss anything because, because the sun is not there. We can detect only what can be recovered. So you don't actually waste your recovery efforts on something which cannot be done anymore. Uh, moreover, you can save some money monitoring this person's effectiveness because it's a real-time technology. You actually can see how oil has been dispersed under the, uh, under the chemicals. And you can detect not only crude oil, you can detect kerosene, diesel, jet fuel. So you actually don't, I'm not going to miss anything which has been spilled. That's that would be the major benefit here. And I believe we can go to the question. And we've got some of them. So let's let me comment on the first one. Is the sensor is explosion proof? Yeah, that's a very important point for the for the oil industry, right? So Yes, the sensor in, is, integra is integrated into the explosion proof housing. So that can be done. And that can be installed in an in a explosion dangerous environment. Uh, another question, can we estimate the oil spill volumes? Uh, David, I believe you mm -hmm. can do that better than me. Yeah, yes. Um, so we, we can estimate minimum volumes. We, uh, we don't detect thickness uh, beyond the threshold. So uh, uh, we can certainly estimate the area over which uh, the oil slick has spread, uh, given information about the, uh, about the installation. And from that, we can, we can certainly give you a threshold volume. That sounds good. So, any more questions? Oh, I think, you know, David, there is one question which has been in the, in the list since somewhere, I think, in the beginning of the presentation. How small is the Pixis camera? So, if you, can just, if you can just switch on your video and show us in your hand, that would be really amazing to see. Oops. 
So I think um, I think I need to. The host should um, uh, start my video. So I'm. I'm yeah, Anna, can you do could you help for us me, with Anna? the video, please? Uh, David, uh, can you just reconnect in like two seconds? It'll take uh, um, two seconds. Just reconnect, and your video will be on. Okay. You want me to leave the meeting? Hmm. Yes, correct. So then can be can answer some questions that are okay. then Q and A. Sure. Sure. All right. I'll be right back. Yeah, we we'll wait till you back. So, how the sensor is powered? Uh, it has power over Ethernet uh, as a sensor itself. So it's pretty much easy to 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 power it on. And the the, the consumed power is only about five to 10 watts, so it's, it's a really low power device. Pavel, am I back? Yes, you are. You are back online, so. And the, um, I'm getting a message that says, I can't start my video because the host has stopped it. Wow, try again? Anna, why are you blocking David? Can you please get the <laughs> video back? <laughs> it's Sorry, two, I it's two, some it's two forty. It's two forty a.m. in Alabama, and it would be really annoying if we cannot get the image from there. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I guess there's some technical issue, so we can just put back the Q and A uh, slide again, and then we can answer the questions. Sure. Okay. So, what is working temperature range for pixels? So the uh, temperature range is, uh, the operating temperature is, is zero to 70 C. Uh, and uh, we can detect temperatures that are a little bit below zero and a little bit above 70. And uh, I believe if needed, if the conditions are harsh, we can use uh, thermally controlled housing to accommodate pixels and make it work. Absolutely, yes. Uh, and we have some of those um, already specified and we can, um, yes, we can, um, and, and in fact, uh, we can, we have uh, housings that are air conditioned so they can uh, actually operate in pretty extreme heat. Yeah, which is I think important for Middle East especially because here it can be really hot. Exactly. Um, I do have, let's see, I'm trying to get back to the, uh, to the slideshow. Um, yeah, we can do, see your slides now. Yeah, okay. So actually, here are some of the other specs that you can see too. Um, and, and we have a, an array of, of uh, focal length lenses that, that you can see here. Um, and the uh, some of the details about uh, the input voltage required. We actually have um, uh, the camera itself can be powered by power over Ethernet, a giga, gigabit Ethernet connection. Um, and, um, and the range of lenses there uh, can let you really reach out and, and do detection at range. Yeah. Another question is if, if the Pixis is waterproof. Uh, I, I believe the Pixis itself is not, but it, can, it will go into the housing, which can be done waterproof. That's correct, yes. Excellent. Wow, we have like many, many questions coming in. It's so, it's, it's so exciting. So, option to make it work subsea with artificial lightning. Is there any possibility to do that? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, the, uh, the thermal uh, infrared light does not penetrate water. And so, um, so to put a, an infrared camera underwater, you would see absolutely nothing. Um, the, the, um, what we're sensing when we're looking at the surface of the water is is really just the very surface of the water. We don't penetrate it at all, so um, oh, so yeah. it does not work underwater. So no luck this time. Unfortunately, we can't change physics. That's correct. That's correct. Okay. So another one. Okay. What happens if the dust comes in, and how do we clean the lens? Um, yeah, so we um, actually have a diamond-like coating that we uh, have available as an option for the, uh, the outer surface of the lens. And so that really takes care of the dust. Um, 
And if you're going to be in a harsh environment, you probably want to be uh, inside an environmental housing anyway. And uh, if necessary, those can have uh, windshield wipers, basically. Um, and so that uh, the housing is the first line of defense, and the uh, and the wiper on the on the housing window would be the second line of defense for that scenario. Okay, amazing. So another another question is. Can it can it be used for the moving objects and can be can it be installed on the moving object? And yeah, the answer is is yes. We can detect moving objects and we can detect and we we can be moving with the camera too. Yes, that's exactly correct. In fact, um, a couple of the videos that we showed earlier. I'll see if I can get back to or let me see. Yeah, so yeah, this one right can, here, if for we example. Can replay the videos. It will be really great to see. Yeah, so here's um, here's the drone application um, that that we've already um, we've already mounted on a couple of different drones, a rotary wing and um, and a fixed wing drone, and of course what we're looking at is moving. Uh, you know, we're looking at the scene from a moving platform, and if the oil were moving significantly, um, it, we would track that as well. The processing is all done in real time uh, for both of those cases. Okay. So, any more questions so far? So, uh, Pavel, you answered this question in the chat, but I think so it wasn't available to everyone. So, I'll just ask you to answer this question again. What is the minimum thickness you can detect? Yeah, so the, the minimum thickness is on the order of 50 micrometers. Um, and again, in terms of oil, uh, oil spill, uh, scales, it's uh, on the thick end of rainbow sheen or between rainbow sheen and metallic, uh, which is, um, if you're familiar with oil spills, those, those will be very familiar terms to you. I think, I think there is one more interesting question came. How we can benefit from this technology in onshore facilities like remote pipelines? Yeah, so um, for uh, pipelines, uh, the, we, we have demonstrated that the PIXIS can detect pooling oil. So if there is um, either an underground uh, pipe that is leaking and, and is producing a pool of oil on the ground, we can sense that. Um, likewise, if it's an above ground and, and it's producing a pool, then, then we can sense that as well. Uh, we haven't um, solved the problem of of, of doing autonomous detection from a drone. So if you, you really need to have an operator that is, um, is looking at the video coming from the drone um, in, a, in a pipeline inspection type application. But, um, but we have customers that are um, in fact uh, pursuing that very application. But I believe we, we can help here from an NTCU side a lot. If you are looking for automated drone inspection, we have we have uh, the software uh, platform which implements artificial intelligence to, to 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 work with such cases. So we actually can train the system to distinguish between false positives and uh, and, uh, and the real pulling oil. So just feel free to 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 describe your application in details after the webinar. We we can discuss that. That's pretty much a lot of experience around this. So, any more questions we want to answer or we want to repeat? Uh, Pavel, there is another question whether there is any inbuilt storage within the device? Not at this point. It's an online device, but that can be integrated for the specific application too. Okay, so then we have another question. Am I going to detect oil that I don't need to recover? That's a really good question. And um, for some operators, that's, that's a really big concern. Um, while this, this camera works so great that it's detecting uh, all kinds of things that, that now I have to go recover because I, I can detect it, but that's not what I had to go look for before. I, that, that's a real problem for, um, uh, would end up costing more money than, than it would save. And as it turns out, that is not the case. So we detect oil that is recoverable. Again, it's, it's this, um, this thickness around 50 microns um, and, and thicker than the rainbow sheen, uh, which is, for example, what we're looking at here. We're looking at 
uh, oil that's between 50 and about 200 microns that you see in the imagery here. So, um, so we, we do detect the oil that, is, that needs to be recovered in some kind of a, in some kind of a spill event. Okay, so there's another question. What's the best angle for it to detect oil spill? Yeah, so, um, so there, it's really fairly flexible. We, uh, we do need to look um, at an oblique angle, um, but that angle can range really anywhere from about 15, I'm sorry, from a, a little bit less than 10 degrees um, up to 45 degrees or so, and that's, and that's measured from the, the, from the horizon. Um, the, the sweet spot is between 10 or 15 degrees and about 25 or 30 degrees, but it does work over that whole range. So which means it's pretty much flexible in application actually and will work in almost every case. That's right, yes. Okay, so, so we have another question. Is the image that we get real time? Yes, the, uh, the processing is real time. Um, again, we can do, uh, the, the processing does not require a lot of uh, computational power. Um, so even microprocessors um, uh, can be placed uh, right next to the camera or it can be remoted, uh, you know, hundreds of meters away. Um, and I believe in in NTC um, can actually uh, add to that capability significantly through their um, uh, through their uh, processing hardware development and in algorithms. So another question is the cameras are better better operated. Here is very simple. The the Pixels itself is a basic module, right? It has to be powered externally. But when we integrate the whole detection system, we can integrate the batteries, solar panels, we can power it from the drone, we can power it from the board of the ship. It really depends on what I'm going to do with that. Okay, are there any more questions? Anyone wants to raise their hand and uh, ask any questions? Or maybe someone wants to comment anything. Yeah, feel free to comment, ask questions. Okay, so we have another question. Can we estimate volumes of oil? Uh, we can estimate uh, the minimum volume. We can, we can uh, measure the area of the spill uh, pretty accurately. Uh, if we have some information about the uh, the specific uh, mounting and the site and that kind of thing, um, and so once we detect the oil, we can definitely tell you what the minimum volume of oil is that uh, that we're detecting. Okay. How long is the warranty? Here is the standard, I believe, one year, and we can extend it. So if you, if, if you have difficulties to formulate, formulate your question right now, you are always free to write the questions later after the, the webinar, but feel free to do it right now too. There is still some time left and we, we can probably answer 10, 15 more questions now. Okay. Then maybe if there are no questions for uh, for right uh, for that moment, why don't we look at the videos again, David, from your screen and see again how the Pixis is great in detecting diesel, how it's great in, in working in a, a waves or flat water. It's just to repeat that and see and show that that's a big difference from the thermal cameras or others. So that's. The, that's how Pixis works in waves, and you see the breaking waves. You cannot see anything in your thermal image. You still can see everything on the Pixis. And that's the emulsified oils all, also on the waves. And there is one more question about thickness. So the minimum thickness of the oil can be detected on the water surface is around 550 micrometers. That's correct, yes. Uh, 
And I think the video on a flat water, on a calm water is really great because it also shows the diesel, which cannot be visible, which is not actually visible in the normal cameras. Uh, by the way, in, in, in this kind of water, radar will be also absolutely helpless. Uh, Pavel and David, I think so. We have another question. How long delivery time after order or available in the market? So delivery from the U.S. Um, is um, about four to six weeks currently. Um, we I would take uh, another time for an integration at this point. It's, it's our side, right? Because that's, that's uh, right. Pixis itself is fixes itself as a sensor. At the end of the day, we need to integrate it into housing, to processing systems, notifications, monitoring. So uh, realistically, we, were, we are talking about probably eight to 12 weeks for the project. So any more questions till the moment? Uh, I believe all the questions are gone. Anna, maybe then we say thank you very much to all the attendees and we will be happy to hear from you as soon as this webinar is finished. Thank you so much for, for everyone to join this uh, event and uh, our team will shortly get back to you so that if you have any other questions that weren't answered in the webinar or do you have any more uh, queries, you can ask them freely and thank you so much. Have a lovely uh, day. Thanks to Polaris and team for being at night. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a good night now. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day, bye-bye.